the way that you best capture your surroundings is, like I said before, is establishing friendships and relationships with people around you and to get like the best emotions, like the rawest like version of whoever they are. This is Entrepreneurs The Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing, here with Entrepreneur The Playbook. And I feel like I got family on The Playbook today. We got Grady Brandon, and he is a famous photographer. And more than famous, what I like is I would like to describe you as an inspired, an inspired artist. And is what I really look for in people is the inspiration, right? Passion, purpose, but yet profitability. You're a young guy, extremely successful in the business side of what most people wouldn't be able to transform into a business. And you know, when people can do that, so I'm gonna start with what most people from Entrepreneur wanna know is how did you take your passion and truly become profitable and, and, and really become successful in a business at what you love doing? That's interesting because I never ever saw myself being a photographer. I got, a, I got when I was a kid, like I skated a ton, I wanted to be a pro skater. Wound up shattering my knee and uh, started shooting photos because I couldn't move my leg. <laughs> and then I was a marketing intern when I was like 14 or 15 years old. And I, when it came to me going to college, I got a full ride scholarship for photography to San Jose State. And I was like, I, I don't want to do photography. I'm not going to be a photographer. <laughs> and I want to go to San Francisco State to study marketing. My parents were like, all right, well, good luck paying for it. Go for it. Right, good luck. Like, you got a full ride. And then I wound up dropping out of San Francisco State to become a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually tried going and paying for yourself? Yeah, and I tried. studying marketing. What was the resistance uh, to photography? Did you not feel a passion at first? or um, It was more of a hobby. It was more of mm -hmm. like just a fun thing. And I never saw it like saw it to be like profitable because I was in skateboard photography. Yeah. And yeah, it, it, there wasn't really a resistance. I just didn't see it. I really loved marketing and thought that was the route. And then I found myself just failing all of my classes at San Francisco State because I was spending so much time shooting photos. Do you see uh, a, 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 an assimilation between marketing and photography? Don't you think that because I'm a marketing guy, right? Mm -hmm. That's where my passion is, is be able to build a profile brand, raise the awareness of something. And I see such similarities between marketing and if I knew how to do what you did, what you do. But I don't know how to do it skills-wise. I mean, yeah, I mean, they go hand in hand. If you're gonna market something, you need photos of something. And you also need like good photos and photos that actually capture the essence. Like for instance, what I do is like, I shoot photos of musicians mainly. And to be able to market their music and promote their music through your imagery, you have to have a solid connection with exactly what's going on around it. And that connection is emotional. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you have to be attached to your art. Like, the, the worst thing ever is like getting random calls from artists that you don't even know. Like, to come in, be like, hey, we're in San Francisco, we need a photographer. And then you're just the awkward guy backstage. Yeah. And don't really know the artist, can't like go out and get good photos. It's like if I had never met you before and I just ran up and started snapping a photo a camera in your face, it happens, man. you would be like <laughs> <laughs> I love the but, internet. Yeah. You know that actually is yeah, happening, but it does. right? It's but but that the, old middle aged man the, is like, but, oh take a picture of Dave Meltzer. But the here. difference is like if you, if you have no idea who I am and I just run up on you with a camera right. and snap yeah. a ton of photos of you, it you're not you're not gonna get very good photos. You're probably gonna get like <laughs> Right. But if you're really good friends with someone, like you're close with someone, um, if I was close with you, I could run up and snap photos. You'd be like, oh, it's Grady. Yeah. And you would know. It takes away. It, just, it drops like, like barriers that artists and people have in front of themselves, like in front of cameras, if you're really close with them. And that's, how, that's the best way to get like, really good content is focus on your, your friendship and your like, emotional connection with the person because that will bring out the most emotion in them. Right. And in turn, give like a way better image and perspective of like who they actually are instead of something really forced. I always like to say people buy on emotion for logical reasons and that emotional connection 
it, it's empty if you're not connected to something that you're emotional about. So mm-hmm. think about this, right? You're really good and it's interesting. I, I feel your pictures, right? You gave me this killer book and I'm just peeking at it as you're turning the pages and I feel it because I say the truth vibrates the fastest. Art vibrates and you use the interesting word. You're able to capture, right, the content. Mm-hmm. And that content holds an emotional charge that comes from not only your inspiration and passion, but the ability to allow someone to vibrate at their own speed, to find their mm-hmm. frequency. And those pictures that I saw hold the frequency of you know some famous people and some other people, but you're, you're holding a frequency there. Where, where do you find you know, that ability to, because you know, here, here's the, the separation I see with artists like yourself really good at what you do, you can capture vibration, but the minute you get in front of a person, you know, it's like my biggest joke about uh, uh, geeks, right? I always say, you know what an extroverted technology guy is? Someone that looks at your shoes, not his, <laughs> right? I think artists yeah. are the same way, they're like, <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I like to I'm look, an extrovert. I like to look at myself as, um, I'm not a professional photographer, I'm a professional documentarian. And I capture what happens around me. I don't go out and like, there are very few instances where I like will sit someone down and be like, here, fix this. <laughs> That's what my publicist Lighting does. everywhere. It's, you I, know very well. Yes. <laughs> he fixes my jacket. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> but, but I just, I, fo- I, I focus on capturing my surroundings exactly how they are, for the better or for the worse. Yeah. It's a, like very, very raw. And, and I capture it, and the way that you best capture your surroundings is, like I said before, is establishing friendships and relationships with people around you and to get like the best emotions, like the rawest like version of whoever they are. And how do you pick, like now that things have moved to digital and I know that you prefer, you know, real art photography mm-hmm. over digital, but how do you pick what pictures you feel are, are, are the best? You know, because there's so many now. It's not, in the old days, you, you're so young, you may not know it, but you get like 36 chances. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I had, I had go into the dark room and develop my own film. Okay, you old I'd school. I actually try to shoot mostly film. The digital stuff just made it extremely easy for everyone. Yeah, and to like, cheat too, right? To, yeah, exactly. My, my proudest thing is I was a professional photographer before Instagram existed. Right. You're, yeah. That's and big, like I was trained... Feed. I was trained extremely properly. My my grandfather was like the, the coolest grandpa. He would always give us the coolest gifts, and I asked for a Canon 20D when I was a kid. And Christmas came, and I opened up the box. It was a Canon 20D box. And I opened it up. It's a Canon AE1 with 25 rolls of film in it. Wow. Well, and I think that's an important lesson, right? Like a lot of parents. Uh, and grandparents, they, they resist, right? They give mm-hmm. us advice on what they think. And it's something that I thought of when I, uh, when I saw your career and did some due diligence. I'm like, man, you know, people just don't do that enough. They don't you know, pursue their passion and that passion has to be fueled by someone. Mm-hmm. And when it's someone that everyone respects in a family, which is usually your grandparents, mm-hmm. you know, it's really nice to think about, you know, we're making investments in our children, right? And my grandma bought me underwear. Right, and she thought she was making that investment to save my mom, single I mean, mom money, you didn't right? Need that. And so I had a <laughs> shitty life. You got a camera. No okay, I have a great life. I'm just teasing. So, but I, looking at it as a parent, it was almost a reminder to me, like, you know, everything that I do could have a great impact if I just sow abundance and, and support, right? And, and mm-hmm. listen. And and I I have been able to do that with my youngest child with esports, mm-hmm. because I ca- got caught up. And your parents may have had the same problem, but I got caught up into, hey, you know, I'm a famous sports agent. My kid has to play baseball, football, golf, you know, and here he is built like me. And all of a sudden it hit me like he's asking me for V-Bucks. And every time I give him V-Bucks, it's like super, super exciting for him. And he's interacting in a different way than I've ever understood. As long as he's playing outside and he loves them all. But I see so many parents limiting, you know, kids that want to be DJs or photographers or artists or whatever it is. What are you going to do as a parent when your kid tells you, "I want, uh, you know, do this, like go to med school"? Okay, <laughs> just, man, that, just thinking about having kids is stressing me out right yeah, now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no worries. I'll take pictures. Um, yeah, just. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to support them in whatever they want to do. Were you your know, parents supportive of you? My parents were extremely supportive of me. Um, every single. Little League game. 
Are you relieved you didn't get a scholarship in marketing and want to go to San Francisco State for photography and have to go (laughs) flip it around? Um, I mean, I'm really I'm extremely happy with how things worked out. They didn't work out as planned whatsoever. And usually, when it when things go haywire and you can't really control them, that's when the best of you comes out. Um, You know, I tried to change my major to photojournalism, and uh, I was promptly denied because I didn't have the prerequisites, even though I already worked for a magazine. And then I met my manager, Misha, and after I was denied photojournalism, you know, I had photos in Rolling Stone magazine and all that, and that's when I realized, like, I didn't need that. But I had, my parents supported me, like, throughout, and then one of the key things is I found mentors throughout the way that supported me in everything. I mean, Misha put up with so much with me. If you're friends with who I know you're friends with, I'm sure. Uh, Yeah. Uh, (laughs) That's my publicist, by the way. Um, You know, it's interesting because I'm dealing with a lot now in teaching people about limiting your point of entry. Mm -hmm. And when I find some of the most successful people, especially at a young age, is that they don't limit the point of entry. For me, you know, a lot of people want to be sports agents. Mm -hmm. And they think, okay, I'm going to go to law school, Yeah, you know, and then I'm going to work for an agency, right? Step one, law school. Right, exactly. And (laughs) that already turns me off. But, like... I see so many successful people, they don't limit the point of entry. It's like, well, I got rejected by this, I got rejected. And instead of thinking, I'm gonna resist it, it's like, okay, what else can I do that's gonna lead me to where I wanna be and trust that it's gonna lead me there? And I joke around with my own career, if you reverse engineered my career, how I ran the most notable sports agency, you'd run away if I gave you that advice. Yeah. Right? And same thing, I'm listening to your career, it's like, well, I kinda went here, did this, did this. How do you, and what advice would you give, I should say, to young people that you know get rejected or moved around in, in what they're trying to find something that doesn't exist, which is what do I what am I supposed to do in life, right? You're the kind of guy that you just did it. You weren't like, well, I'm supposed to, you know, I yeah. don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, do you hear that from your friends yeah. even still today? Yeah, still <laughs> still to this day. I mean, I had absolutely no idea what I was gonna do. I just kind of went with what felt right. And not exactly what was making me money because as an entrance level photographer, like you're not going to get paid. Like you have to work your way up. You have to do unpaid internships. Do internships too. Don't just go to random concerts and offer free photos. Work under someone that will help you. Um, work work with people that you see something in. You don't have to do exactly what your mentor. Like you can have many many different mentors, and look up to many different people, but not follow their exact path. There's something to take from working with a whole different group of people, like top level photographers, people that run marketing agencies, people that are successful but still have no idea what they're doing. They just, you can, t- you can pick and choose and take what you want. Just surround yourself with people that are more successful than you and on a path that you see something you can take from. You know, a lot of kids look up to me and they're like, how did you get, <laughs> how did you get where you're at? And I'm like, I have no idea. Right. Like, I just I did what felt thing. right. And I'd, ever since I was a kid, um, I shot photos. I right. wasn't lazy, Here's I was never con- lazy. Great conflict, right? Like, people do what feels right, but yet you need to take action. You can't sit at home high on your mom's couch, mm-hmm. you know, and just think, I'm gonna be a great photographer and because I bought a nice camera, right? Yeah. And I see kids doing that, I'm like, That's, that's what a lot of kids do now, and there's no drive in it. It's like they'll work and work and work at some, like, some small job to save up for a helicopter ride so they can dangle their feet over a city and take photos with or their digital drone, camera. Right? Or like buy a drone. drone. Right? And that's yeah. going to be an art. And then they're bummed they can't you know, fly it halfway across yeah. the world. And, and it's like, what are you, it's cool. You have a lot of Instagram followers and everything. But what do you have other than that? Do you have someone? Do you have a, like people that you are working day to day for? Like taking advice from them? Do you have other people that you're actively working to like impress that aren't just Instagram followers? Like, you always have to have people to criticize you and to bring you down that are higher up and where you're at. That's the only reason why I'm at where I'm at. The amount of criticism this guy's given me. <laughs> yeah, so Misha, I wanted to ask you about that. What's the best piece of advice? You know, obviously, I don't care how 
successful you are. I, I have three teenage daughters, and I always say, there's nothing, no offense to anyone out there, there's nothing dumber than a teenager. And, uh, and I have really good kids. My wife always says, I imagine what do people do when they have bad kids, because you know, these are really good kids, straight A's, whatever, and they're driving us nuts. What's the best piece of advice that Misha gave you? Shut up. <laughs> Which meant what to you? Um, it meant like, I, I don't want to hear what you did or what you plan on doing, like results speak louder and you should go do it. Like you can talk all you want about it. And then- How, how old were you are when you first heard that from Misha? How old were you? 19. And you were telling him how great you were gonna be? Yeah, and I was probably wearing like a pair of $500 shoes that I shouldn't have gotten. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, there's no worse feeling than wearing $500 shoes when you really need $500. Yeah, thank you. It's like, you, great. that's a great point for entrepreneurs, right? Nothing worse than wearing a pair of $500 of shoes when you need $500 to eat. Yeah. It's the same thing I say about airplane rides. My flight got canceled yesterday and, I, and everybody was upset. I said, I'd much rather be upset on the ground than scared in the air. Yep. Right? Yeah, it's, it's the, the same thing. It's yeah. the same thing. And I see so many kids. Now, I was blessed because I was a millionaire nine months out of law school and I had different issues with money that I had to, to understand because mm -hmm. I thought happiness was directly a result of making money. Mm -hmm. um, but I see so many young entrepreneurs, they work really hard. I had a kid who sacrificed everything like you, right? Started at the bottom and ended up, you know, first really good job. Now he's the head of USA Badminton and he has a side gig for media, all stuff that he learned through mentorship and hum humility. Mm -hmm. And what does he do? Go out get a $500 lease on a, an Audi, you got insurance and gas and all that, and then, you know, I buy all my stuff on sale, right? Yeah. Like, honestly, if you're not at, like, saxfifthoff.com buying really good stuff for 90% off, you're a fool. And yeah. he's, I'm like, hey, how much are those shoes? He's like, $200. And I'm thinking, you know, a year ago, man, you were sleeping on my couch, yeah. begging me. Like, wh wh how do you not continue to have that type of humility? It seems like it's interesting that Misha he gave you humility. Yeah, I, I could definitely say, I mean, it's, a lot of it came from Misha. A lot of it came from a few other people around me that calling me out when I was being an idiot, yeah. like when I was young, but. And how'd you feel like, you know, cause you're 19 years old. Did you ever feel like, F you, Misha, I'm doing to do what I want to do. I should go find a different manager. I'm the talent. Or oh, well, I wasn't, he, he wasn't my manager at the time. Oh, I, really? I, was, I was his intern at the time. Oh, even yeah. better. Yeah, I was, I was doing the most ridiculous jobs for him. I was, he had me, he put me <laughs> through Reese's the ringer. Up, yeah. by the way. <laughs> he put me through the ringer. He would send me out like four or five nights a week to shoot concerts. And and it wasn't because he couldn't go and do it, it's because he wanted to put me through it and build like that sense of like hard work going out and being tired and really earning it and being proud of my photos the next day. And then the next day I would go into the office and sit right next to him and then I would edit his photo book. <laughs> and I would have to do my stuff on my own time. Yeah. And did you ever get bitter about it? Oh yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> what, what made you put, because I see so many kids quit at that point, right? They're, they're even, with your good friend, my publicist, right? I pushed him, I pushed him, and he's this close to quitting at times, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, you, you ease back. But what kept you saying, we know what, this is worth it. You know, Misha's a good guy. I'm learning way more than, than, than anything of value. My love for photography that I had, like, really found and my realization of it's going to be a lot harder if I'm not on his side. Mm -hmm. And I always knew that he had my best interest in mind. So I was like, you know what, this sucks. But the fact that I get to do what I love for a job outweighs everything else. And I just need to put my head down and just grind through it. Like, cause he's not putting me, he's not sending me out on these gigs because he's lazy. He's putting it out cause it's gonna build good character with me and he knows what it's gonna take to get through. And who's your biggest fan right now? My biggest fan right now? Yeah, probably Misha, right? <laughs> Could be. That or the kid that has my name tattooed on his leg in St. Louis. <laughs> Come to take pictures of you. Yeah, I love Instagram. You're now the, you're the content, the capture, yeah. the amplification. Okay, la last question, which I love to ask successful young entrepreneurs. Uh, and you are an entrepreneur, by the way, not just an artist. Yeah. Once you know how to monetize what you do, you're an entrepreneur. Otherwise, you're an innovator or artist. But this is my favorite question to ask. How old are you now? 20, 27. 20, oh, right there. 
All right, what advice do you have for me, the 50-year-old? Wow. I wasn't prepared for that one. Yeah, I got to say oh, one man. question. Everything else was softballs. I would say, listening to your podcast earlier, someone said this, and it resonated with me because I, I heard this question, but it was, I forget who said it, but be present and be aware and do everything you can in your power. Like all of us are working so hard to get to where you're at. The best thing that you can do when you do this is support younger people and just like your wisdom is invaluable to everyone that's younger than you. So I would say just be as generous as you can because giving is always better than receiving. And stay in receivership. It's like the camera, right? You just don't know when, when I'm, you know, what you kids call dropping wisdom and all the compliments I get, mm -hmm. you just don't know what impact it has. And even your art has the same thing in your photography. And um, it is hard sometimes, right? Because as easy as it may seem to be, everyone wants to be where I'm at or where Misha's at, mm -hmm. you know, there's a whole life going on. You know, yeah. there, there's a complexity that keeps on growing with it. And to make sure that you're humble and present for everyone else and be in mm -hmm. receivership is really important. And be, be accessible. And right. all, yeah, being, being accessible. And just, I mean, you have so much to give to younger generations that the second that you could like shut off and just kind of keep to yourself and everything is the second that you kind of really, at least in all the younger kids' eyes, will lose your power. Yeah. Like, I, I think there's two sides of accessibility, and we'll end with it is one, you know, being accessible to others. But beyond that, if you're not able to access your own information still, mm -hmm. you know, I see as you get older, people stop accessing help. Like, I need mentorship. I'm learning all the time, not just from older people that sit in the situation that I want to be, but a lot of what I'm doing now, I my mentors are, you know, like I get crap for it, but Gary Vee, right? Mm -hmm. Because I don't know how to do this stuff. Or guys like you, or P Rod is the one that told me to be present the first oh, time. Oh, he was? Right? Okay, you, yeah. You're just skateboarder, right? And but but honestly, I, I'm constantly delving and that's where the question came up with like, hey man, can you give me advice? Because I I want to know not only how to capture the right content, but how to amplify it at the right vibra vibration so that I can help more people. And if I think that, you know, I'm, if I'm speaking to the 50, 60, and 7 year old crowd, mm -hmm. because that's who's giving me advice, that doesn't always help, right? Yeah. We need to access the right information and be accessible to give it and be in receivership. Things come through us and you've learned years of wisdom and, you know, this guy to my right over here should be really proud because I, I hope that the kids that I mentor, the ones that are really successful, uh, can articulate how much it meant to them to be pushed because mm -hmm. I think there's too much get a trophy for trying. Yeah. Uh, and you know the guys that I know are victorious are the ones who work for free. They interned. They made six hundred bucks. They slept on couches. You know they ate top ramen. All the stuff that I did. And in the end, sooner or later, the truth will come out, and your yeah. truth will come out, and you'll be successful. And just want to congratulate you, Grady. And last words, and this is in honor of Bradley Hartman, my publicist. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. This is Dave Meltzer with Entrepreneurs, The Playbook.